Hey everybody, it's Jim, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. This right here is our input list, our command line argument list. Corn Shell has a way of shortening it once you get inside of your script. And we're going to look at that because in the future we're going to need to be able to shorten this list. So, this is our program that we're working on today and it's called shift.ksh and it takes arguments. The corn shell shift num command takes a list, takes the list you enter in on the command line which is stored in the list dollar sign asterisk or dollar sign at and shortens it. If you input, here's your program name, here's our command line list, then our list is going to be A through G right here. Now if we ran the shift command, and as you can see it's commented out, then shift by default gets rid of the first in your list. So our result afterward, dollar sign at or dollar sign asterisk would then be what's left over. So we took the A off. If afterwards we then do a shift to because the shift command, this is a corn shell command, allows you to put a number after it, then it takes off the first two. So we're left with what's after it. And if you do a shift space zero, then it doesn't remove anything. And that actually gets to be important later on in a future lesson. So this is what our program is going to do. We're going to give it a list of arguments on the command line and then we're just going to print it input list and this right here. The reason why we use a dash R is if you said print and you try to say print dash X and the dash X was in quotes, corn shell would think that the dash X is associated with the print statement. It would think that the dash X is a flag that belongs to the print statement. So if you put a dash R in front, capital R, that tells corn shell that whatever is in with these double quotes, if it starts with a, a flag, then don't think that the flag belongs to the print statement. The dash R flag, the dash R option here for the print statement allows you to start the string with a flag. Okay, so we're going to remove the first entry from the list and we just print remove one entry from list then we say we're doing a shift command we run the shift command it should remove the first entry and only the first entry afterward we just go out and print what the input list is and once again we use the dash r in case the first entry happens to start with a dash. We then say we're going to remove two entries from the input list. We tell the user that and we tell them how we're doing it. We do it with a shift 2. We then execute the shift 2 command. We print the list again and lastly we do a shift 0. So we tell the user we're removing 0 from the list we tell them we're doing a shift zero and we do a shift zero and then we print the input list again and this is just to show that the shift zero does not remove any entries okay so here is how we run our program now this has flags but they won't get interpreted because we didn't use our get ops command within our program the only purpose of this program is to show you how the shift command works so we have one two three four five six seven entries. Let's run the program. So as you can see our input list does consist in fact of the seven entries. That was the dollar asterisk list. Now we say we're removing one entry from the list with the shift command and you notice it has no argument after it so by default it removes one entry and as you can see after we execute the shift command it does in fact remove the leading dash X so the list now becomes that. 
We then say that we're going to remove two from the list, and we show the user that we're using a shift space two command, and it does in fact remove the dash y and the 45. So we're now down to this. So as you can see, it the first time it removed this, second time because we did a shift space two, it removed these two. And now we're saying remove zero from the list with a shift space zero. And as you can see, it removed absolutely nothing from the list.